Well, good day. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at the First Congregational Church in Essex, United Church of Christ. We believe that each and every one of us, and you included, is a unique and a beloved child of God's own creating. Well, friends, I thank you for joining in here. This service is going to be, uh, this one on YouTube is going to be a little bit shorter because we're having a in-person worship down at the Essex Gazebo on Sunday morning. That will also be uh, recorded and will be on YouTube. Uh, but I'm doing this for folks who can't be there. And um, for this to show on Sunday morning uh, on YouTube and also for Sunday afternoon and later on the cable station. So, um then would you uh, join me now in a slightly abbreviated version this week of our worship and let us prepare now as we enter in to our scripture. Well, friends, hear this scripture. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. And he, they said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Well, Jesus said to them, I will ask, also ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. He says, and then he asked them, did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Well, they argued with one another, and they said, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he said, or answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. And the father went to a second son and said the same. And that son said, I go, sir. But later on, he didn't go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, well, the first, of course. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Well, here ends the reading. May God's blessing be upon those words. Oh, friends, we find ourselves in a very interesting discussion between the chief priests and the elders, uh, they were the people who basically had the authority in the temple. And Jesus, though, being a rabbi, being a teacher, having followers, he was allowed to teach. Um, there were many teachers in the temple. And so they were asking, well, how is it that you have the authority to teach what you are teaching? And um, it was a, probably a pretty big question because the, the, com the concept or the topic of authority was spoken out, you know, so authority, you know, it's authority is, you know, uh, do you have relevance? Uh, do you have power? Uh, do you have backing? Um, who is it that, um, that gives you credence, gives you um, the power to do this, is basically is what they're asking, because let's face it, they're in the temple. They're the leaders, they have the authority. And so it's interesting that they ask him about his authority. Um, it's almost as if they're shaky on their own, or at least they were showing it to him. And so he sort of plays off of that and says, well, you know what? If you're um, honest with me about this assessment, I'm going to be honest with you. And so they feel that they are stuck in the, a, a conundrum, a quandary, they don't know quite how to answer because they're afraid of the people and they're afraid of him. And so they just throw up their arms and say, we don't know. <laughs> sort of an interesting thing. And so he says, well, I'm not going to tell you either why I have authority. 
I don't know if that's all that satisfying, to be honest with you. Uh, but what he then does is he, he goes, and, and you know, I'm not quite certain who he's addressing here, and I'm not sure if you do either, because then he tells this parable, or sort of parable, about the, the, the man and his two sons, and one agrees and doesn't do it eventually, and the other one disagrees, but he does go, and <laughs> it turns them into the, the tax collectors and prostitutes, of course, the people who have nobody supposedly likes, but everybody is in cahoots with, right? Um, let's face it, um, you know, the prostitutes and the tax collectors. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a hard one because, you know, uh, people love putting other people in the worst places of society, and yet they, um, they engage them quite a bit. Well, anyhow, uh, the neat thing about Jesus is that he engaged them as well. And what was his engagement? Jesus' engagement was with, with them to, to love them and to say, you are meaningful and you are purposeful. You are uh, beloved by God. You know, Jesus is telling us that in many ways, um, uh, authority is not something that they need to be concerned with these chief priests and the elders. They need to stop worrying about power and supposedly being in the right or being in uh, the position of power. And instead, they need to start thinking about how they're going to serve. You get that? Not power, but service. Now, this is an, a theme, of course, that we see throughout Jesus' ministry. And a lot of us have a hard time uh, really taking that in. Because as humans, we, we constantly turn again and again and again and again to the big discussion of who has the power. Oh, do you have the power? Or does he have the power? Or does that guy have the power? Oh, we want the power. Oh, we have the power. We're going to use the power. The discussion needs to be changed. This has to be changed, in fact, in our society here and now and today, in our, 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 our federal and our local governments. There's this enormous waste of time about power and authority. Oh no, I have the authority. When all along, service is not being taken care of. Jesus is here today to remind each and every one of us that we are to serve one another, that we are to appeal to, associate with, work with, work for, oftentimes the least considered among us, whether they are least considered because of uh, the lifestyle or the life that they have chosen. Let's say, let's focus on the two things here, the, the prostitutes and the tax collectors. We're not supposed to be Cast, ignoring them, casting them out, or thinking less of them, and spending time talking about power, we're supposed to be making relationships with them. Now, how many people in Essex, if I were to say that to, are going to uh, be happy to hear? I bet not a lot. They're going to shrivel up in horror and say, you're kidding me, prostitute, not me. But Jesus says it again and again in the scripture, talking about service to others, lifting up people who are looked down upon. You see, that's why he didn't answer the question of authority. That's not the question to be answering. The, qu 
question is to be answering about who is going to answer the call to serve. The two sons, one said, nah, ain't gonna do it, but went eventually realizing this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And the second one said, yes, sir, you got it, dad. And then he went off and God knows what he did. The answer is not about authority and power. The answer, my friends, is about service. This is what we're called to do. This is what we're supposed to be putting our time in. This is what the church is called to do. This is where our money should be going into. Instead of trying to gather up power, gather up notoriety, gather up, oh, we're the best, look at us. We're supposed to be going out amongst everyone and lifting them up. I think we're doing that here at this church, and we should continue to do it. Backpack program, Thanksgiving and midwinter meals, um, uh, the, the Making a Difference Scholarship, um, the advocacy for the gay and lesbian folk, advocacy for uh, people of color, um, doing things that other people don't want to do because it has nothing to do with power. Well, that's what we should be doing and focusing always on, is in the service. So that's our message for the day, and I hope that you take it to heart. And I hope that you take it as a new thing of power, that you recognize that the power of God is in the power to help. That's why he was called a savior. He was there to save, and not just because it's some sort of a word of saving the soul or the sins or whatever, you know, we hear about all the time. But the deal is, it's about saving us from wasting our time dealing with the meaningless issues of power, which of course we all know leads to death, destruction. It leads to exclusion, oftentimes hatred, and oftentimes fear. So my friends, Toss aside the question of authority and power and dive in to the idea of service, I pray. I thank you so much for hearing my message and I pray we are the people of service. Amen and amen. Well, now we enter in some prayer. Would you uh, find your comfort place in prayer and let us pray now. Precious Lord, Take our hands. We first appeal to you for ourselves. May we be at peace with you and find a tender and encouraging place in meeting with you in prayer. Send to us, we pray, your words, your feelings, your emotions, your motivations in our meditations then that follow prayer. May we know you because we visit with you so often. Uh, continue to heal those who are uh, in need in their, their body, their spirit. Heal those who have had surgery. I, I am now currently um, fine, but as of the time this, this video, oh Lord, goes on, I'm going to have a little bit of recovery on my wrist pray for health there and anybody else who's had surgical needs taken care of to heal well. Um, we pray for the people in the western portions of our nation suffering from these wildfires. It's so devastating the loss of homes and people and animals and life, uh, life goals and so much. It's very awful. Lord, care for them, and we pray that we can find missions to help them. For people suffering from the hurricanes that have hit us and are continuing to hit us, we pray for them as their lives are washed away, perhaps. We pray that they heed the warnings and get to high land so that they may survive and that their families do the same. 
Lord, we pray for our politicians everywhere, that they be people of service and they stop fighting so much for power, and instead that they serve the American people and the needs of especially those who need it the most, not the people who have everything, but the people who need it the most, we pray. May they seek their authority, O oh Lord, in service. So many things we could pray for, though, Lord, but each of us has our own thoughts and prayers about that. We will rest in some silence and then join together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. But let us rest in a few moments of silence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, hello there. About announcements, um, I'd like to let you all know that I've started a new prayer Zoom session. This will happen on Wednesday evenings, 7.30 p.m. until 7.45 p.m. That Zoom session will be one where your voice and your face will not be seen or heard. It will only be me, and I will be reading and offering prayers that people have sent in to our special new prayer email. So if you have special prayers that you like spoken on that Wednesday night, you may do so as often as you please. You need to write an email to prayers at essexucc.org. Again, that's prayers at essexucc.org. I will get those, and uh, please don't send it at the last second because I may not be able to see it. Uh, give me plenty of time, and on Wednesday nights at 7.30 to 7.45, we'll have this Zoom, and you'll be able to hear your prayer in that Zoom. Remember, no faces or voices other than my own will show in that Zoom. Um, Please uh, keep up with your pledges if you're a member of our church. Uh, continuing to pay the bills right here is an important thing. And when COVID is over with, we want to uh, uh, emerge from this and worship here again and uh, bring more forth more people that we have reached, I think, by going on YouTube uh, more efficiently. So I pray that um, you can uh, keep going and be of uh, that regular pledger that you've always been. Uh, Mary Lawrence continues to recover at home from uh, her shattered tibia. Thank goodness she's home. That's nice. But she's running Dudley ragged with uh, her, all of her needs. But um, he loves her so much, and that's a good thing. Um, there are, of course, uh, things that we'll need to be concern concerned about, like um, our white fragility uh, book discussion. That's on Thursdays now at 4 p.m., and as of October 1, I'm going to move all the church um, Zoom sessions onto one address. As of October 1, anything that the church does, one Zoom address. That way you only have to remember one and have it down one. There's one exception, and that's going to be the prayer one. The prayer will be another one off to itself. But everything else, church-related, one Zoom account, okay? Starting October 1. Alrighty. Um, I think that's enough announcements for now. Uh, God be with you, and I thank you so much, my friends, uh, for being a part of our church. Uh, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore. Amen.